Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video and in this video we will be going over uh, section 4.1 and 4.7 on exponential functions um, and we are specifically looking at applications involving exponential functions. Um, these two sections are very similar so I kind of just joined them together into this video. Here's the success criteria for the lesson. We simply just want to use exponential functions to solve various real life apl applications. And most importantly, we want to explore exponential growth and decay. Let's get right into growth and decay. The growth and decay formulas are pretty much identical. The only thing that changes is the rate of growth or decay, which is represented by the variable E. Um, so for exponential growth, the equation is the same as decay, uh, which is f of x equals a, which is the initial amount, times b to the power of x. And b, again, as I said, is the variable that will give us the growth or the decay. So if we want our f of x to grow, right, if we want our left side to grow, we want to if we want our f of x to grow exponentially, sorry, as x increases, we want our b value to be greater than 1. So for growth, we want our b value to be greater than 1. So b is defined as 1 plus the growth rate, which is given in percent or decimal or whole number sometimes. A very common b value that is used is 2 b equals 2 which is in the scenario where our f of x is doubling each time x increases by 1. So every time x increases, our exponent is going to increase, so we're going to multiply by b one more time. So if our b value is 2, we're multiplying by 2 each time x increases by 1. right? So uh, in this case, the growth rate will be equal to 1 because uh, f of x is growing 100% more than it is right now. So our b would be 1 plus our growth rate, which is 1, which would equal 2. So our, our equation would be f of x equals a to x, right? So we'll have our initial amount, and we'll double each time x increases by 1. Okay, so for decay, we have the same equation, f of x equals a uh, times b to the power of x, but now b will be defined as 1 minus the growth rate, right? So with uh, with growth, we have addition. With um, decay, we have subtraction. Because if we want exponential decay of f of x, as x increases as well, right? Our b value must be less than 1, right? So we want a b value less than 1 for decay. A very common b value that uh, we use as uh, with decay is half when b is one half <laughs> which is used when f of x becomes half the amount each time as x increases by one so if our b value is is one sorry is uh one half then we'd have the formula f of x equals a times one half of x which is used a lot in half-life uh, problems with uh, a lot of different um applications to it as well. So if we have this equation, every time x increases by 1, we're going to multiply our whole equation by half each time, right? So our f of x is cutting down by half, which each which each time that x increases by 1. So in this, this scenario, our growth rate would be uh, 0.5 or 50% as we subtract 1 minus that 0 0.5, which will get us 0 0.5. Okay. Okay, let's go over this example using growth and decay. Uh, we have a bunch of growth and decay functions on the left. So we just want to specify if it's growth or decay. We want to state the initial value, so our a value. And we want to state the growth or decay rate. So our uh, growth. slash decay rate, which is in the equation of B, which is one minus growth slash decay rate. 
Okay. So our first equation is v of t equals 20 times 1.02 to the power of t. Um, so we want to look at our b value, which is 1.02. If it's greater than 1, it's growth. If it's less than 1, it's decay. In this case, it's a little greater than 1, so it's going to be growth. Our initial value, our a value, is going to be at the front of our equation, which is 20 this time. And our growth rate, if we have growth, our b value is going to be 1 plus growth rate. Right? If our b value is 1.02, which is going to equal 1 plus growth rate. If we subtract 1 from each side, we will get growth rate, right, because these cancel out, equals 0 0.02. So our growth rate is going to be 0 0.02 or 2%. Right? Erase this real quick. Okay? Next equation, we have P in N equals just 1 at the front, times 0 0.8 to the power of n. Our b value is less than 1, so it's going to be decay. Our initial value is simply just going to be 1, right? Because we have nothing in front of the uh, front of the brackets, which just means we just have a 1. And our decay rate, right? If our b value for decay is 1 minus growth rate, sorry, decay rate, and our B value 0 0.8, then our decay rate will equal 0 0.2, right? 0 0.8 minus 0 point, oops, minus 1 is going to be negative 0 0.2. And if we bring that other negative to the other side, we get 0 0.2. So our growth rate is going to be 0 0.2 or, or sorry, our decay rate is going to be 0 0.2 or 20% decay rate. Alrighty. Next one, ax equals 0 0.5 times 3 to the power of x. This time we have a 3, meaning we are tripling our amount each successive time. So it's going to be growth. Our initial value is going to be 0 0.5 right here. And our decay rate is, our decay or growth rate is going to be um, 2. Because, which is going to be 200%. Because we are increasing, we're adding 200% to what, what we already have because our B value again is going to be 1 plus growth rate. If our B value is 3, then our growth rate is going to be 2. Okay. Next and last, we have G of W equals 600 to the power. Sorry, 600 times 5 over 8 to the power of W. So it's going to be the K because 5 over 8 is less than 1. Um, our initial value is going to be 600, right? And our uh, rate, our decay rate, it's going to be 1 minus 5 over 8, which is going to be uh, simply 3 over 8, right? So if we put this in decimals, this is going to be 0 0.375. So it's going to be 0 0.375 for the decay rate, which is 37.5% decay rate. Next example, it says a town with a population of 12,000 has been growing at an average rate of 2.5% for the last 10 years. Suppose this growth rate. So tells us that the 2.5% is our growth rate will be maintained in the future. Determine A, the population of the town in 10 years, and B, the number of years until the population is doubled. So first thing we want to do is figure out our growth equation. And we have to get all our information from the question so we can build our equation. So it's going to be f of x equals a times b to the x, right? Or we'll say we'll say time, and time is going to be in years. Um, our a value, our initial value, is the initial population of the town, um, which is unknown because this twelve thousand is the population of the town right now, and it says it's been growing for ten years. 
So if we want to figure out our a value, we actually need to plug in p, t, and f of x to calculate for our a. So our t is going to be 10 because it's been growing for 10 years to get to 12,000. And our growth rate is 2.5% uh, or 0 0.025. So our b value is going to be 1 plus 0 0.025 to the power of 10. And f of x is going to be 12,000. So 12,000 is going to equal A times 1.025 to the power of 10. If we rearrange, we get that A is 1.025 to the power of 10. And 12,000 divided by that. It's going to be about 9,374.38. If we round it, because of course, um, this is people, so we can't have a decimal. We, we can just say 9,374. So if we want a population of the town in 10 years, we put f of x, and this is actually going to be f of t. So f of 10 in 10 years is going to be um, in 10 years from, oh, the population of the town in 10 years. I'm guessing it's 10 years from um, right at this moment when they have a population of 12,000, which means that it's 20,000 from the time that they started. So we didn't really need to calculate for A because we could do this in two, two ways. We could look for F of 20 using this, this initial value or F of 10 using the value of 12,000, which is the value of the population right now and our growth our B value is going to be the same in the future, it says. So we can say 1.025. So we actually didn't need to do all this, but it's okay. We found the initial population 10 years ago. So we're going to find the population in 10 years. So it's going to be to the power of 10. So F of 10 is going to equal 1.025 to the power of 10 times 12,000. It's going to be 15,000. 361. That's going to be our population in 10 years. And it says find the number of years until the population doubles. So uh, our population is going to be double of 12,000, which is going to be 24,000. It's going to equal 12,000, which is our initial value, times our growth rate times t. We need to find this t because we need to find how many years it takes us to get to this number, 24,000. How many years from today? This question is a little confusing because it gives you uh, the population uh, that is that the town has grown to in 10 years, but then it asks you for the population of the town in another 10 years. So you kind of need to assess the problem and see what you want to pick as the initial time. So you can pick right now, which is uh, when the population is at 12,000 or 10 years ago, which is when the population was at, was at about 9,000. So if you want to evaluate for this, we divide both sides by 12,000. So we're going to get 2 equals 1.025 to the power of t. And here we can use a concept that you haven't really learned up till now, but you will learn in the future, and it's called using logarithms. Um, when we have something like this, a number, equals a number to the power of the exponent. And if we want to find the exponent, we can say that t is equal to log of 2 over log of 1.025. And of course, you won't know this yet, but if you want to just plug that into your calculator, you'll get that t equals log of 2 divided by log of 1.025, which will give you Um, about 28, 28.1, but we'll just round it at 28 because we want to say 28 years. So in 28 years from when the population is 12,000, our population will double to 24,000. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and make sure you keep practicing these, con uh, these concepts um, with the extra practice questions in the textbook.